please, let's give a warm welcome to Vicky Creeps. Hello. Welcome, Vicky. That has, that has got to be my favorite closing credits. Was that in the script, you dancing and with a mustache? What do you think? <laughs> there are moments. Knowing me. <laughs> there are moments throughout the film that I just, I, I'm curious where they are in the script, like you pulling your, you know, showing us our tongue and the finger. Were moments where you liberate our vision of the Empress. I mean, so the, the end credits, even now when I see it, I always get very nervous because I'm remi reminded of uh, how it felt when I did it because it was not planned. And I went to the makeup, into the makeup trailer and I said, do you have a mustache somewhere? <laughs> yeah, why? I said, no, just give it to me and with something to stick it. Uh, so I put it here. And I didn't tell anyone because I was afraid if I tell them, they'll be, well, maybe it's not the right idea. No, no, no. So I knew I have to just do it. And also, I, I felt it was like my gift to the director, or, you know, to say, this is my. Because for me, really, that's really <laughs> where I felt, uh, how do you say? It's like the essence of what I wanted to say, the mustache, you know, it's because everything is just an illusion. And are you a man? Are you a woman? Are you an empress? Are you a mother? Are you not? Are you the lover? Are you the, the wife? It's all just made up definitions of trying to make this, you know, a, a controlled place. Um, so I was trying to break out of this and the mustache to me symbolized this. And all the other things, like the pulling the tongue and the finger, was kind of, me and Marie, we knew that w m one of the main things we wanted to do was to break her image from the beginning. But it wasn't clear what it would be and when I would do it or if I wouldn't. So a lot of it was just, uh, just me. Uh. <laughs> the other aspect that I, I, I adore about this film is her meeting Louis Le Prince. And those scenes, um, can you tell us about the genesis of that? They, they never met in real life. Um, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, ahead. so Marie, um, in her research, she, she came across him, but really by accident. And then when she read about him, knowing that she went to film school and no one ever told her about him, and they told her the Frère Lumière were the first. Uh, no, but there was a guy before. And also, he I don't know who of you knows, but he disappeared mysteriously in a train. He just never arrived in Paris. No one knows what happened to him. Um, but this guy existed and actually invented film. And so she started to play in her mind that, you know, they couldn't have met really, but if she would have gotten really old and him very young, they might have. And as she knew that she was starting to decompose also the, the narrative of time, and as you could see with all the modern elements, she just played in her mind and said, well, what if they would meet? Because to her, both of these people were trapped in a time when they were already part of and ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, so that's why. And it's also, and I love the juxtaposition that she has to sit uh, for portraits and it's still, and, and she has to be composed. And then with this new medium, she's able to be closer to herself, correct? Yes, yes, yes. And to me, it was a very, but that's maybe not the movie, but it's um, since I'm here, I'm just going to be personal. Uh, it's a, my personal story to this moment. Why it was important was because I often feel like this as an actress, and I haven't really solved the riddle myself, but for some reason, I feel free when I'm in front of a camera, which makes no sense because I'm being trapped and, and watched and... Uh, in normal life, I don't like to be seen. So, but when I am in front of a camera, I feel safer, as if I'm allowed to do what I want, and no one will come and 
stop me, or I don't know what it is. But so that day, I got very moved because I could feel the same liberation or liberating feeling as her, you know. Uh, and I think it really stands for the whole film because one is you, you make a film, you, you have a script, and then, okay. Then is I have to play someone who existed, which is impossible. Then how can I try and make this right, which is, again, impossible. Then I try to learn everything I can about her, but then how do I make it personal, or when does it become personal? You know, I think that's when a film is maybe moving or when it when actually something personal is happening. And I think all the things you mentioned, like the pulling the tongue and the finger and the ashloch, and is also me, Vicky, uh, rebelling against what I'm supposed to be as an actress. It, you know, when you're an actor, you're supposed to look like this or talk like this or behave like this or I'm supposed to be very interested in how I look, you know, but I'm not. Or I'm supposed to be interested if you like me, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, and I had a hard time for some years because I felt trapped in like something I would never really signed up for. I love cinema, I love the art. I told you, you know, when I was 16, I was always watching old films. But I never, then when I stepped into the role of the actress, I really didn't, I couldn't follow and I didn't feel it really. And so this movie I think is very personal because it's my, you know, personal upheaval, you know? There was a side of me when I, I've seen the film a few times now that, that I feel that you are liberating the Empress. Um, were you aware of that when you, w with the tongue and the finger, is that you're actually freeing her? Um, I mean, I was aware as much as I can, but when I'm working, it's difficult to say I'm aware because I like to just, uh, I feel like I'm not even an actor. I don't know what I'm doing, but I just follow my intuition. So it's not really aware, but I was in the sense that I needed something to give me strength because I felt I can't do it. It's too too big and an empress, and you know, everyone's going to laugh about me. Like, I, I, who am I, you know, to be like CC the empress? So I needed something that would give me strength and s against the fear of of disappointing. So what I did um, one day, I just closed my eyes and I imagined CC as well as Romy Schneider, because Romy Schneider was maybe one of the, the best and most authentic actresses, but was always bound to her beauty and to her being a, an actress and being a beautiful woman, and especially because of playing Sissy in the beginning, she could never get rid of this image of the beautiful girl. And she was trying to all her career, but um, Germany really almost like ignored her completely for this. So. She suffered from the same thing as Sissy, portraying Sissy, but so many epoch uh, later. And um, so I thought to myself, I will, you know, even if no one would like the film, but just for myself, I will give them the freedom to misbehave. So I would close my eyes and say to them, okay, let's go to the playground. And then it was not about me, and it was not about me doing a good job and being a good empress, but it was also posthum giving them the possibility to just off the kakahon. I don't know how to say that. Off the kakahon. Um, the, the movie happened. Mischief, I don't know. <laughs> the movie happened because of you. You wanted uh, this role and you wanted to tell the story about Sissy. Um, can you? you know, tell the audience the genesis of, of telling the director about it, and she actually wrote the script for you in mind. Um, so first of all, I was lucky that I met Marie and that she wanted to work with me in the first place. You know, you always have to be lucky somewhere. So that was my luck, and I wanted to work with her again, and she wanted to work with me again, and we were in Vienna, and I said, we have to make a film about Sissi. And she said, that's a bloody stupid idea. <laughs> like, it's the worst idea. Because for her, growing up in Austria, Sissi is really something like McDonald's. It's 
Every Christmas oh, yeah. we watch. I grew up watching yes. Sissy on Christmas Day. You watch it on Christmas, and it's uh, really in Vienna especially. It's on every cup, on every T-shirt. And the poor woman was not heard when she was alive, and now she's just selling cups, you know. <laughs> so, you know, really. And But Marie, for her, it was very superficial, so she was not interested in making a movie about such a superficial character. And I told her that when I was 15, I read the biography, and I could feel there was something sad, melancholic, dark behind what I was reading. But I was too young and uh, naive to really get it. But that was stayed with me. So I always felt no one had ever really told her story. And I thought it would be a good idea. And yeah. And then I was lucky a second time because Marie thought of it and went to the archives. And then two years later, I think, after I finished Phantom Thread, Really, uh, she sent me a script in my letterbox and a postcard that said, Dear Vicky, uh, I guess you were right. <laughs> and <laughs> what was it script. like for you uh, reading that script? Do you remember when you got in and how it yes. felt? Yes, so the magical thing, like in life, I love this about life, that you can never calculate it. And it always happens in this weird way connecting things. So here I was, you know, from Luxembourg and... It's the smallest country you can imagine. And I grew up almost like in a fairy tale story running through the woods and no idea of this. And then I did Phantom Thread and it was really quite shocking to me to be suddenly looked at and talked to and, you know, all, all of this. Um, so when I came back doing the press tour, I had the script in my hand and I thought, wow, now I really understand her. And even, not really, because she was really famous and I don't know to who you would compare her nowadays, but you can imagine. So I had only had a taste of it, but I, I had. And I felt, now I can play her, you know? Um, you mentioned uh, Romy Schneider and, the, and Sissy. I, my recollection of that film is that she's wearing so much makeup. Exactly. And so good you say, yeah. And no, 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 go ahead, no, but you, you made the choice of no makeup. Yes. Can you talk? Yeah, that was exactly one of my thoughts, was if you look at the movies of Romy Schneider, and that's why I said this in the first place, she was maybe one of the first actresses, not the first, but, you know, but she was so authentic, really, I believe, and uh, in her work. Why, in all of her movies, she's covered in makeup? I mean, I don't know, but her eyebrows are somewhere here. When, when it's such a beautiful, authentic person, there's no reason for it. So this made me think, aha, uh -huh, okay, interesting. So apparently in her time, being a woman, this is what they told you. They made you believe that if, unless you wear this mask, you are not seen or you will not be loved or you will not be accepted. And from here I thought, well, that is exactly what Cece was feeling. In her time, that was a very different time but where you had the corset or you had the manners or, you know, as a woman you couldn't, basically you were not allowed to do anything but sit and, and knit something or make a painting or... Um, so, and then I connected and that gave me... That's why I got the energy because making movies like this is so difficult. We don't have the money and it, every day is so hard and it's so many hours and you start at 4 a.m. and, like, where do you get the energy? And I took the energy from the rage... I felt for these women, you know, because I'm free now to do what I want, but they were not. So I felt like I want to give this to them even after they, they passed mm -hmm. away. Yeah. You, you mentioned the idea, I mean, the notion of, you know, women after 40, they disappear. But then in this movie, you use the disappearing as an empowerment. Um, and, you know, the veil and, and her withdrawing. Um, can you talk about that, that notion? Well, I think in the movie what we tell the story is that she disappears from the um, expectation of others. So she disappears from this image of yourself that you carry that is just superficial. Mm -hmm. And we all know it is, but we still play the game every day. You know, like, oh, how do I look? 
And it's so silly because it's really not what it's about and we know, but still we do it. And I think in the movie what is, in my, what felt to me beautiful to do is that she's allowed to put it off like a mask and go, well, whew, just take this part of yourself that thinks about how you look and everything, and just put it aside and then, and then she can just be and sit inside of herself, you know? Mm -hmm. And just be who she is with nothing to add or to take away or to optimize. You know, I, I think that's also the story of the film is that we have to get rid of this optimizing, you know, terror of optimizing. Mm -hmm. We always have to optimize this, this, this chair. We have to optimize, you know, I need a better sofa <laughs> and then I have to get my home delivery and oh, now I'm comfortable. I have to optimize how I look. I have to optimize my marriage. I have to op you know, yeah. and in this movie, it's so nice because you can use this whole, the old structures, they are so nice to show, you know, how we all still live as a society in a way, but it's so, so much clearer. Um, there was so much preparation that you had to do for this film. You learn how to ride side saddle, you learn fencing, you learn uh, hung, um, Hungarian. Um, I'm missing a lot of other stuff that you had to prepare. Uh, can you walk us through it? So the, the craziest thing I had to learn was ice swimming. I don't know if you know ice swimming, it's a thing now. So and Sissy, at her time, apparently she was already doing that. So I will always remember, I arrived in Vienna, then I had a, I had a timetable like when you go to school, like at eight ice swimming, at 10 fencing, then riding, then Hungarian, then manners of the court or whatever. And I remember I arrived at 8 a.m. I took the, the subway and I went to the Danube and I got out and there I was standing in January and it was snowing next to the Danube and the people were walking past, you know, in like these big coats in the snow. And this man is standing there, hi Vicky, hello, and he's the Olympic champion in ice swimming. And he's like, okay, Vicky, so let's go. And he starts taking off his clothes. And I'm like, I am fucking doing this. I cannot believe. <laughs> you know? So I also took off my clothes until I was in my uh, swimwear. And I went into the Danube every day at 8 a.m. learning how to ice swim. And then when we were in Cannes, Marie said, Vicky, I have to tell you something. It's not in the movie anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going. I've seen this film a couple of times. Where does she ice? Where does she swim in ice? Uh, but but the the other stuff, the fencing, Hungarian, was that difficult to yeah. juggle all that other stuff? I mean, I wish I would have had more time. I had like one month, a bit more, almost two months, but actually one month. Uh, and also it was locked down and, I, and the kids were homeschooling, so I had the kids with me and my mother, and we were living together, and my mother was trying to homeschool my kids, which didn't work at all, and then <laughs> I was trying to help. And then, you know, it was like, and I had to learn all these things. And uh, so it was kind of difficult, but also I'm, I couldn't complain, you know, it's what I love to do, and I learned many things I use every day now. <laughs> um, so. And the, the, the corset, how, how was that to deal with? I hate to talk about it. Oh. It's, uh, no, it's, uh, it was, uh, I say it a lot and I really mean it, it was really a mistake. Uh, it was a mistake yeah, for? Yeah, it was a miscalculation from me and Marie because so part of the preparation was to wear the corset because when I had the first try on, I realized that as soon as I wore it, my legs became very stiff and heavy. I think it's the blood circulation that doesn't flow. So I realized I had to do something in my eating habit because you can't eat when you wear it. And I didn't know how it would be working, not eating. So I reached out to a person to try and teach me how you can eat everything like a soup, you know, and, uh, I, which I hated because I love eating. And uh, then 
so th there was actually like kind of a preparation for the for the for the corset, and then wearing it, I realized, and Marie too, that we had miscalculated it because these kind of corsets, because we said we would wear it the way she did, you know, because I thought if she suffered from it, you know, it's the least I can do to do the same. But they would wear it after 1 p.m. until, you know, 6 p.m. I don't know how long, but just for the time of day. And uh, I had to start at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or wearing it until the night, how you make movies, you know. And that's too long, and it's really still... I just really hated it. And I mean, I can't say that now, I mean, now it's in the movie and yes, so maybe it was good for that. But it actually hindered me in my acting. I felt I can't, I couldn't access my emotions normally. I was, I always felt depressed and sad and I wanted to smoke and just do anything that felt like, <sighs> you know, not eating, but feeding me somehow. and. Uh, yeah, it, it was really, really painful. I really so. Um, um, I I love the costumes by Monica Bottinger, and um, she combines the you know the authentic silhouettes, but then she creates high fashion with it. Were you involved with the with the costume uh, choices? Yeah. Um, no, but it's Marie really who I mean Marie influenced a lot of this with her personal taste, you know. The whole modern elements also came from the fact that she would see, they would show her furniture, and it would be the exact furniture of the time, and she'd be like, ugh. And then she would see another chair and be like, what about this chair? And they're like, oh no, that's so many years later. So she started going, well, I don't care. I just prefer this chair, and I'm gonna use this chair. And the same was with the costumes. So when Monica showed her the first uh, drafts, there was a little bow here and a little thing there, and at that time it was very ornamented, you know. Um, and Marie didn't like it. She was like, oh, "It's it's too much, too much." I wanted more like sleek and like a, and that's really how it came to these um, more modern silhouettes. Because Marie started, so Marie and I did the same thing. She as a director and I as an actor. That over the years she had been taught so many times of what she has to do as a director, and this is how you do it, and you have to, you know, blah, 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 blah. And there she felt, I'm just gonna do what I want to do. I'm, I want to film what I think is beautiful, and not what people tell me, that's what you have to film, because it's perfect for the time. And I did the same on the acting side, so I think we were just both on the same mission. <laughs> I'm, am I right that she made the choice to keep you away from the other actors during filming? Um, n no, but maybe, I mean, if that's what you know, I, I don't, it, <laughs> hey, um, I don't want to, it, does it matter really? No, no, I was just, when I, I read somewhere that she talked about keeping you isolated, but, yeah. but. If it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Um, Florian and you. I mean, what I did is that I remember t telling her that I think I won't be able to socialize a lot because I, as a person, I'm very, as you can tell, very open and social, and I love everybody. And uh, so to me, it was really difficult to get to the place where you just go like, give me this and blah, 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 and talk to people from above. And I thought it would help me to not, be friends all the time, but in the evening I was, and I was a lot with other mm. people. <laughs> and, um, I don't know if you remember the scene when I'm fencing, Yeah. and I go out the window. So that was not in the script, that I go out the window. <laughs> and that day I went out of the window because I got so upset. I didn't know where to go with my feeling. Delivered you jumping at the window, which is a phenomenal yeah. moment in the movie, although it wasn't. I was really lucky, I was lucky there was no, I remember opening the window thinking, oh, what if there's like a light, you stand a pole or something, or, or someone big, standing there. Or a big drop. No, yeah, this I knew, otherwise I wouldn't have. <laughs> 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 hey, um, in real life, Sissy, you know, died very tragically. She was murdered, but you guys go a different route. Can you tell us about about that change? 
Um, I think it came from, so Marie knew that she wanted to do the movie with me, and uh, there are two parts in Sissy's life that are talked about a lot, which is when she's young, 16, 17, 18, or when she's old and, and, and gets assassinated. And so she focused on the time between, where there was not much writing about, and it's more mysterious, and then Marie thought, well... So she read that, apparently, after a certain time, she would never appear in public unless she was wearing a, a veil. So no one, technically, actually ever saw her. And then Marie went, huh, what if it was not her? <laughs> you know, that's how she got this idea. And then also knowing that she doesn't... We cannot tell the story until the end. And then also, th she, sa she keeps saying that she thought... We've seen it so many times that a woman gets assassinated, you know, that she dies in the end. She felt like, oh, no, maybe let's not kill another woman in a movie. And, uh, and then she found this beautiful, you know, image, which is about liberating yourself and what you said earlier, getting rid of, 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 of the image and just starting a new part of life and freeing yourself from your own image. Mm -hmm. um, the film speaks so much about women in, in this day and age. And, and it's, it's, it's a very powerful statement. You're the one that started the ball rolling. When, when, when you wanted the story of the Empress told, was that your idea to, to speak about, about today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was uh, about today, especially uh, the internet Instagram and everything, and how this is all stealing our image of ourselves, and we are becoming almost uh, slaves to our own image, you know. And to me, she was the first victim of celebrity culture, and now I think we are all sissy. There's, there's no sissy anymore. Like, sissy is in every bedroom. We are all a slave to what we think, how we would look like. We all have a very clear idea of how we look. It wasn't like this before. Now we know how we look for others. We know how many likes we get. We know it's changed the whole perception that we have of ourselves. So that was something I really wanted to talk about. What happens to a person if their image becomes bigger than themselves? And if you start, all your thoughts evolve around keeping up the image that you think you have or that you think people have of you. How can I be more liked? Uh, oh no, I did this, now they won't like me, you know. And all so much thought evolves around it, and I think it's really dangerous, and we don't know where we are heading as a society, really, with this. So I wanted to tell this story also for this, you know, to show an example of a person hundreds of years ago who really uh, almost crumbled from this, you know, people knowing how she looks and talking about how she looks and... Yeah. Well, you've become one of my favorite people ever. Um, I was, I was telling Vicky that th in this past year, you know, this is, uh, you know, we run the Riviera and and we show films. And th er earlier this year, uh, last year, we showed Bergman's Island, and then we showed Hold Me Tight, and now we're showing Corsage here. This is going to become the Vicky Creeps movie theater. Uh, um, Thank okay, you. I come back and surf next time then. That would be awesome. You can ice swim out there. Um, thank you so much for being here, Vicky. You're amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you.